Hello everyone and welcome back to Energy Toning with Liz. In today's video, I chat to energy healer Vicky Webb, who is a long-term Pangu Shengong practitioner, as well as a recently qualified Reiki practitioner. She describes all the health challenges she's moved through since starting to practice Pangu Shengong, as well as how she has helped others with their health challenges using the Pangu Shengong moving form and the non-moving form only. She says she feels better in her 60s than she did in her 30s, 40s and 50s. If you're interested in learning Pangu Shengong for yourself to improve your health mentally, emotionally and spiritually or help others and join a community that will support you in your journey, check out the links below. So how did you get started um, with Pangu? How did you hear about it first? and and um, what okay, I'm sure you've heard of Elizabeth Medallia, who's in our group. She's my cousin, and I was seeing her, I want to say at least 17, 18 years ago for acupuncture, and her and I were talking about it because she's been doing it for years and years, and she taught me the first two, and I didn't really do much with it. I practiced, but not to the point that I've been really practice, practicing the last few years to the point that not too many people know I'm actually going into business as a healer. Okay. Great. So I'm doing, I am very excited. I quit my full-time job to pursue this. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. So I'm excited. I'm nervous. Um, it's going to be a really good thing because I'm going in with three other women who do, they do Reiki. They're, they're also healers. Um, one of the women is really very intuitive to a lot of, a lot of stuff. So our energies together is just phenomenal. It's amazing. I mean, I've been just like blown out of the water the last year with it. Fantastic. So that's how I learned about it. D did you have health conditions that led you? I did. I was overweight to the point that I had a lot of pain, like back pain, knee pain, just a lot of different things were just going on, like cholesterol. Um, not that, you know, the pangu, I'm not really sure if it's helped me, but I've lost 92 pounds in five years. I've kept it off um pain free off my cholesterol medication um i just overall healthier at 61 that i think i was in my 30s and 40s and even 50s wow so that's... i definitely feel that it's helped my health that's fantastic so so you mentioned just before that you're not sure where the pangu was helping but then you went listed that you're you lost all this oh weight. i feel it does it's i up until i'd say maybe eight or nine ten months ago i know i have the, the energy i know my energy is stronger i'm also more feeling like when i'm doing healing that I'm like, wow, some days I blow myself out of the water, like people that I do that I sometimes I'll do people and don't, don't tell me what you got going on. And it just, all of a sudden, if they have a headache, it just instantly, I get a headache. And I kind of was like, didn't talk about it because you, I thought that people would say like, oh, she's whacked or something like that. But now it's like, I can't get enough about broadcasting it and I actually reached out to Olivia because I want to take the course to be able to teach people it. So that's my next step. Fantastic. Yeah, that'll be a great um, tool to add to your, your healing business. So what, what kind of healing do you do? Like, are you Reiki? Are you like? Well, I'm just right now practicing just the Pangu, but I am going to be certified in Reiki 1 and mm -hmm. 2 over the next month. So I'll have the combination of it all. Um, I am um, ignited with the Reiki fire, but I don't practice Reiki yet because I really want to get the whole concept of it. Um, so I'm not just thrown out and feel. So I want to do it all together. Um, I know it's a different 
type. I also know when I am having Reiki done to me, the first probably three or four times, because I have it done, I do Reiki healing, have someone do it on me because I like to keep my energy up. And um, it was like our energy was fighting each other because their energy is different than our energy. And it took me a few times to let go and say, okay, it's okay. And it's amazing. It's just, I can feel like her energy and I can feel my energy. And sometimes it's like, like that, but it's kind of like, it's just, an, it's, it's amazing to know that you, myself and other people have this ability to help others, to help ourselves. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. How long have you been practicing Pengu? Um, like I said, I learned the first two Ooh. probably about fifteen or seventeen years okay, ago. So a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So I practiced just solely just doing the movement just for myself. I didn't really express it to anybody else. And I'd say in the last six years, maybe seven, really, it's been a daily thing, like not just once a day. Sometimes it's multiple times. It could be a dozen. It could be two dozen. It depends where I am at the given moment because my job, I can sit down and I can just do the non-movement or I do the non-movement when I'm uh, walking or driving. I mean, I just, I try to get it in whenever I can. Um, I'll do the movement like in the mornings before I go out, I'll do it, you know, when I'm home. So I go back and forth, like throughout the day with the non-movement and the movement form. So mm -hmm. I'd say in the last six or seven years, really faithfully several, several times a day. So what was the, the flip? Because, um, so you sort of dabbled in it up to that point, but then it, something happened at six or seven years ago. It wasn't like nothing like drastic it was just it clicked because I was feeling stronger I was feeling more intuitive um more time life wasn't crazy I was going through a lot of different things back then um like with family my mom being sick and it just I didn't put the time in that I should have put in and now I'm putting the time in because it's something I want and it's something that I feel strongly for. Mm -hmm. So you must have been getting at least enough benefits, you know, 15 years ago, you know, 10 years oh. ago to mm -hmm. to know that it was really, this is something, this is, you've got something yep. here. And honestly, I haven't, I didn't, Elizabeth and I haven't talked in a few weeks, but I always felt because I didn't see a lot of different things. Like people say they see different things. I didn't see things. I felt things, but now I'm seeing slides of just random different things, but they could be a bird and it's just a slide of a bird. It's just, or it's just flowers blooming, not blooming. I mean, I haven't experienced that any of that up until probably a year or so ago. Right. And I'm just like, and I'm, when I'm doing the, like when I'm doing the no movement, I'm seeing, I'm like, oh my God. And like, I'm like, I can feel myself going back because I want to get deeper into that picture. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you experienced that. Well, the last Master O lecture, you know how he did the lecture on um, yeah. the special topic? Um, yes. That was the first time that I um, started to see, like I, I wasn't getting the intense visions that a lot of people were describing because yes. I mean I've only been practicing three years and only okay. like, really seriously in the last year like so mm -hmm. you know, I mm -hmm. did a daily you know when I first learned it but it wasn't like it is now and okay. um, so I feel um, so that last Master O special topics uh, I really did start to see like it was purple screen like um, yeah and and like birds like a, a purple light that was I felt it was coming from here, but this purple light morphed into a, a bird or and then it morphed into an angel and then it morphed into turtles. And I remember you saying that. Yeah, so that, that. that was new for me. Um, but, yeah, hearing other people's, you know, amazing <laughs> visions, I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, actually, my son actually started practicing about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I've already talked to him because his baby's just four months. I says, when Jackson can start walking and talking, we're going to start teaching him. 100%. And if he, if he agrees. And actually, my daughter's actually going to take the first um, course through Elizabeth. So I think that will be amazing. And And I love the fact, and I don't know if you heal people, but I love the fact when I do healings on people, because now I'm more comfortable saying what I do and just to hear what they feel and their sensations and stuff like that I mean I'm like some of it is just it's like wow it's like it just it blows my mind it just blows my mind and I don't know why but it does can you give me an example of some of the things people have told you okay I have a trainer Last summer, her daughter broke her arm. And I said, would you like me to send Nikki some healing? And she said, if you don't mind. So I shut my phone and turn my watch off and I do it. And no sooner did I get done, I had a text from her. She felt my healing go through her left hand because that was the arm that was broken. It was her left arm. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, the, when I, Michael, before he started practicing, that's my son, had severe bad back pains all the time. And I started working on him and I would do the hand movement on him, the movement. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'd be going over and I'd be going like this. I'm like, what the heck? Because I used to get trigger point shots in my back and I haven't had them in years. I'm like, oh, please don't tell me I'm going to start have to get those shots. I'm thinking his back is his lower back. So after a few times of doing it, I called him. I said, Michael, where's your back pain? He goes, oh, middle to the right. I'm like, what? I was physically taking his pain and it was coming through me. I'm like, OMG. Oh. Um, <laughs> one thing I did is a mistake that I'll never do again. Last April, I was working with five people that had the upper respiratory. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have done them all at once. I didn't know who ends up getting the upper respiratory because I didn't probably take in consideration just sending out all that energy to all those people all at once with that severe, it was like, like last April and I was going to Mexico, hearing him going to Mexico sick as a dog on antibiotics because mm -hmm. here I am trying to help these people feel better and I ended up, so I called Elizabeth, I said, because every once in a while I'll have her, I'll, say you know can you send me some energy because I can feel myself dilapidating sometimes and I was telling her she goes you can't do that you can't send to the you know so many people with the same thing I'm like well you never told me that before so I've never done that again so anybody that has that upper respiratory and I'm healing I'll just do them one at a time mm -hmm. mm. it's um, like you've got to some... stock, stock up your own chi and then yeah heal them yeah, yeah I've yeah. learned that the hard and... way as well <laughs> yeah and sometimes I just I, I'll do just a couple of practices and just won't dedicate it to anybody just so I can build myself up mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of meditation I do listen to a lot of Master O's music um, and I actually listen from um, on Spotify I downloaded some uh, Qigong music that I just it just it's nice. I love the music and I just, I'll do my practice with the music. Mm -hmm. mm, so. Beautiful. so your, your son is obviously getting benefit. Oh, his well. back hasn't bothered him in I'd say six months now. And how long was it bothering him before? Probably I'm going to say a good year, year and a half, but he never really said anything and I didn't say anything. And you know, I said, you know, let's just try it. And he can actually feel me healing him. And every once in a while, because he's an electrician, he'll tweak it if he's pulling wire. And he goes, oh, mom, I just tweaked my back. Can you send? And I'll say, right, come in right now. And like I say, I shut my phone off and he goes, I felt it instantly. Like he gets the warmth and the warm sensation in his back. I do the non-movement with him now because it's just, if he is in any pain, knock on wood, he hasn't. 
I don't want that pain because I just remember doing it and doubling over. Mm -hmm. um, even when his girlfriend just, they just had a baby and on Thanksgiving and all through Emily's pregnancy, I practiced on the baby right through in vitro. Mm -hmm. Sent that baby energy and he came out thriving. Um, almost nine pounds. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. So, I mean, the to have these kinds of personal experiences, it, it really reinforces um, your own experience, you know, when you see it in other people too. Um, yeah, absolutely. Is there any other um, examples that stand out to you, like other people or yourself? Or My sister Michelle has lupus, so I've been working on her. When Before I first started working on her, she always had swollen hands and fingers. When I was working on her, I'd say probably the first five or six times my fingers would swell up. Now her hands are not swollen. She's able to function. She can open jaws. It doesn't bother her like it did before. Um, there's a girlfriend of mine that I probably met her probably about two or three months ago. I'm a nanny by profession. And we met and she was telling me that she had lower back pain. So I sent to her and I was sending to her a couple, three times a day. And I hadn't really talked to her for about a month because just different things with the kids and whatnot. And I saw her probably about two weeks ago. I says, oh, Molly, I said, how'd you back? She goes, you know what? She goes, I can wake up fine and there's no pain. I'm like, oh, well, thank your guardian angel over here. Because <laughs> she didn't know that I was still sending it to her. Um, and so did you that, send it daily? Like, was it a set time that you? Yep. Yeah. Nope. I have a group of people that I do daily. Like I'll do my two kids, Michael's girlfriend, the baby, my sister, my dad. I'll throw in a few other people and I'll just dedicate to whoever at that time. Like if I know, like my daughter, I'll give you an example after what, what with her, um, dedicate what, I, what they need. And I'll just ask for it to be sent for what they need. And I'll send them energy, calm and focus and whatever. And I have probably 30, maybe 35 people that I send to daily throughout the day. Um, not all at the same time. I'm up at 3, 3.15. So I'll do a couple of practice. Yeah, I'm up early, I'm, whatever. <laughs> I, I, and I'll just do a few right before um, I get out of bed, I'll do a couple of the non-movements and just send to whoever. And I'll do a um, um, movement before I go to the gym. Then I'll do a non-movement drive into the gym. I mean, it's just, I'm a habit now that it's pretty much the same time. And when I meet random people at the park and we'll talk and they'll say something. And, you know, I met a woman probably about a month ago and she walked up to me and I had no idea who she was. And she started talking to me about Reiki. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. That's weird. She must've been very intuitive to mm -hmm. that energy. And so we started talking, like I said to you, if this had happened two years ago, I probably wouldn't have said anything to her. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, yeah, I said, this is what I do. And I was explaining it to her She goes, I'd be really interested in trying it. And she called me a few days later and I did it. And the, I said, please do not tell me what's going on, because I'm like at the point now I want to see if I can feel. Mm -hmm. She had a headache. Then I started with the runny nose and started coughing. So when we were done, I did three um things on her. And I said to her, I said, okay, so do you have a headache? She said, yes. I said, you got something going on, on upper respiratory? I says, I can't, I'm not sure because I'm not a doctor. And she goes, yeah. She goes, my allergy started. And when I was doing her, I was coughing. I'm like, wow, oh, okay. And um, so I did her a couple more times afterwards. We got off the phone and she called me. She goes, oh my God. She goes, you made me so relaxed. She goes, I fell asleep. And I, I've gotten that a lot. My daughter, she's here and I do her. She literally will sit on the couch and fall asleep. <laughs> My daughter, I am working with her. She's um, has severe anxiety. 
um, depression. She's got, you know, little mental Ill illnesses going on. She's an adult woman and she was always in the hospital every year, no matter what, at Christmas time. Just, mm -hmm. it was just that time of year. She always ended up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. In two years, she has not been in the hospital. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh -huh. And does she practice Pangu or she's... She's actually going to learn it. She's actually going to learn it. She that's was supposed great. to do the first session with Elizabeth last month, but she ended up getting COVID. So mm -hmm. she had to cancel that. So she is going to learn it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it, yeah. So it sounds so that the 35 people that you sort of keep in your um, sphere, how how many of them now are interested in, in doing Pangu or they are already taking it on or? You know, I have not asked them, nor have they said anything. I'm 61. So I think you know, they're roughly my age or younger. And I think there's some of them are still skeptical. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping once I venture into doing this as a prof profession, that they may see more so how benefit it is. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, I think, are kind of like, mm, okay, yeah, I did feel something. Yeah, I do feel better. I like when I do someone for the first time to either A, be with them or definitely be on the phone with them because I like to feel, not feel, hear what their reaction was, what they feel, whether they get the hot, the hot, the cold, the tinglies mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm very intuitive to that. And actually, you know, now that you said that, I could talk to one girl because she's a young girl, 26. And she was having a hard time sleeping. I says, oh, I can help you with that. She goes, oh, really? I said, yeah. And I told her. So I've been working with her now for seven nights. She mm -hmm. has not one woken up, not even to go to the bathroom. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're a real sponge to um, people's energy. And 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 you really do have this, this gift. On top of obviously doing all the, the Pangu practice, which, you know, you mm -hmm. really um, embrace this fully. Um, which yes. is so great to hear. Um, and yeah, you should definitely become a teacher. <laughs> oh, I am. Um, that's, that's why I gave up my job. I already gave my notice and this is a passion and I was nervous, but you know, I said, it's going to work. Cause I put out all good in my life. I'm positive. I only want positivity. I mean, my circle's very small. And I'm okay with that because I don't want my energy to be drained. Mm -hmm. I have good energy and I can kind of wrap myself in a bubble so nobody can tap into it. I don't know if you are aware to do that. Mm -hmm. um, like when I go into the shop that I'll be working at, we're all protected because there's so many people that will come in there. Mm -hmm. that will just come in just to try to get your energy because they know mm. what it is. And it's funny, not ha ha, but it just made me think this woman, Nicole, who I'm going into business with, I met her a few years back and it was right when I started doing yoga and I never had energy to do anything. I didn't care. Like I go to the gym four days a week and I do yoga three days a week, five, seven years ago. Mm, no, I just didn't even care. So we connected and it was weird, but we didn't connect. It was just like in the universe connection. We just, mm -hmm. I just felt connected to her. Didn't really give it a thought. And then when I was leaving, she goes, can I have a hug? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Whatever, you know, cause I'll hug you. And it was going on like a minute too long. And I'm like, oh, so I pushed her back just like nicely. I said, I know what you're doing. She was ciphering my energy. I yeah. said, you dirty little bird. <laughs> and we just started laughing. And I wasn't really feeling it at first because I don't know if you've ever done yoga, but I was just way relaxed. And then all of a sudden I'm just like this. And I'm like, no, I know what you're doing. So she's the one that I'm going to be going into business with. And yeah, right. our energy level is amazing together. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I used to teach yoga actually. So yeah, that's that I she feel does. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Do you, yeah. you still practice? 
Um, not as much. Panga is my main thing now. You know, the funny thing is, I feel like everything I've done has been a lead up to get to Pangu. You know, yes. I, I I started with health conditions and I was always on Google looking for, you know, um, solutions. And then I went down all the detoxing and the diets and the supplements and all yep. that stuff that you look at. Mm-hmm. And then realizing that none of that was really going to help. And then realizing that it's more about energy. So that I found Ness Health and um, got onto that. And that was life changing. And then I found Bikram Yoga, Bikram Hot Yoga. And that was life changing. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, well, that made me feel so good. So now I'm going to become a yoga teacher. So I did that. And then I just I, it just kept progressing. And then I um, I was uh, friends on Facebook with Keith Cooley. Um, and he's a Pangu teacher and practitioner. And, and he just, for years, he would talk about it. And I never took it up, you know. Um, with him Um, but then COVID came and Melbourne in Australia was the most locked down um, city in the world and I was just having a crisis about the world like (laughs) thinking this is this is all so crazy Um, and you know masks outside by yourself like walking down the street you know it was all crazy and, and I just thought if if this is the world and majority seem to be on board with it then I must be crazy you know um so I so suddenly all the tools I had that I had had in my tool basket didn't work anymore and so I thought all right Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to Keith and and he taught me and so I'm like I need I need something else I need a different perspective I need to understand good and evil better I need to understand what it is to transcend good and evil um and something happened with you know practicing pangu it's it's like i had energy everywhere outside of myself and i was and i pulled all this energy back to myself even though i had a background of yoga and meditation and all of that it yeah. was different pangu was different it was deeper it was yeah um, but it was subtle but it's a stronger um, energy yeah yeah so quite life changing and and you know in the past when i've had lower back pain i've you know would normally have to do some pilates or do some yoga uh-huh. to fix it but now i don't even have to do that you know oh that's amazing <laughs> isn't it so, such an amazing thing oh it, it it's it really is stunning and i i see it in my you know, I work with my daughter a lot. She's she's eight years old. You know, she'll if she's having you know ups and downs with school. Like I notice the difference when I don't do pangu on her. If I don't send her healing compared to when I do, because when I do, she's much more level. She's much more yeah. resilient. So it's kind oh, of I, like, agree. I agree. I need I agree. to keep sending that battery to her. And I'm really hoping that she's just going to take it up with me one day, of course. Well, I think she will, because I read in something that you wrote that you are reading book, Master Bo- oh, yeah. the third book to her. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's what I said to Michael. I want that to be Jackson. I want me, my kids, my grandson, and hopefully when he's older and has kids, I, I just wanted to go on. And I think, like you said, have I talked to other people that clicked in something in my head that, yeah, maybe I should, because I think the more people that do it, I think this world is going to benefit from it. Mm, mm. It's like, it's being the change, you know, being the change that you want to see. And that's why I wanted to make this sort of mini documentary where it's just, it's conversational, but it's, it's sort of introducing more, I guess, to the Western perspective because yeah, the the Chinese cultural it, it there is a culture of just um following and not necessarily asking questions as mm-hmm. much as West like Westerners are probably a lot more skeptical. And yes, I agree. Uh, it's, it's not our culture, you know. Um we yeah. don't we didn't um Taoism is not our culture and um but no. it doesn't mean it's not relevant to us. And no, I agree with you on that. Well, I don't want to keep you too long because I said we were only going to chat for 20 minutes, but it's so thrilling talking to you. It was very nice talking to you too as well and get some sleep because I know it's your, what are you in Monday already? Monday, uh, 10 a.m. Oh, okay. So you don't have to get to sleep. So you're already no. had your sleep or did you sleep? <laughs> yeah. So Sunday. <laughs> enjoy. Good. Sunday for well, you. It was very nice talking to you, Liz, and have a wonderful day. You too, Vicky. Thank you again. All right. You're welcome. Bye bye. I'll be in touch soon.